So, yes, I was asked to do a little topic about recording hardware and software for Opencast. Um, I hope we have a discussion about this, because I think most of the topics were there yesterday. <laughs> so, I don't know um, from which point of knowledge you come. So, please just ask or chime in. Um, I have only two um, presentations, so um, from my perspective there are two different types of integrated um, capturing solutions for open cars. There's one in the open source way, you can build your own capture agent with. Um, these are the softwares I found. So um, from Teletext, the uh, Gallicaster. Um, the REC is a Windows software, this is from Elanipro. Um, PyCA is a Linux capture agent. And uh, Ghetto Studio is a self-recording studio built um, within JavaScript. So it can record your, um, yes, your screen automatically. Um, if you build it on your own, you also need some additional hardware. Um, these are only two we are using. This is uh, one of the Ethan RVIO. You can capture the HDMI input, and we are mostly using Panasonic RVU70. Um, these are 4K cameras with um, HDMI output, SDI output, and uh, network output. Even NDI is included there. And the second part is uh, commercial systems, which are ready for recording. So you don't have to put hardware together. You can just push it um, into the room and uh, connect your cables and then configure shortly um, opencast connection and start recording. This is Teltec, Ncast, Extron and Arec. And uh, there are also uh, World Vision and um, Matrox who say they have a uh, connection to opencast. So these are the two major topics I think. And now I hope you have some ideas. Um, and from my perspective, what I heard, NDI is a very promising um, future way of capturing. And um, we are doing something in an additional way with RTSP streams over network. But um, at our university, it's always a question of how good the network infrastructure is working. So maybe we are there in two years. <coughs> Yeah. So that's it for me. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I'd like to a show of hands who uses Galacaster here. Um, Pi CA. Come on. Extron junk. Sorry, my Extron is very high quality equipment. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> um, and others. So what's uh, the other? <laughs> uh, so what's the other system? Uh, so we're using. Um, so I think it's a derivative of Pi C A, it's Tip C A. Okay. So that's something Pascal Zero Two built. <laughs> yeah, so we're numbered. So actually I'm not Brian, I'm um, Pascal Zero Three. <laughs> <laughs> Our boss just said we got two, we need a third one. Uh, yeah, but we're using this one on a virtual machine, so our our video feed is uh, feed oh, into yes, a, in a, a dark queue and streamed all over the campus into our cluster, our VM cluster, and there it gets into the TXA. Well, we have also have some custom stuff in Switzerland, of course, right? So our Switzerland recorder, which is a Mac OS capture agent with full support for Opencast. Ah. Yeah, we are we are using Mcast uh, Hydra, ah, ten, ten of them right now. And we have uh, three um, Pi CA for capturing 4K material from screen. And in one uh, room, I also capturing stream from <coughs> camera and one from an RTSP, um, HDMI to RTSP streaming box. And then put it on a cable to a USB to Ethernet. That's the easiest way sometimes. So I've got to the pole. Curious. <laughs> um, who lets the um, staff interact with the capture agent directly? Okay. So, uh, 
Like pressing buttons, stop and start. Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, with having um, students that are doing the job for us, so if it's oh. <coughs> interacting, and I mean, it's not a professor who is doing the interaction. Okay, so I'll get a student from our team. Cool, so there's a human, human engagement yeah, yeah. with it. Um, exactly. And who, it's, who uses it autonomously with scheduling or? Yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we do both. <laughs> Okay. We don't let people start recordings, so all recordings are scheduled, but they can pause and stop them. Cool. Well, yeah. If you ever get it where people just walk into the room, then they just press stop. Well, they can try, but then nothing will happen. Oh, well, you mean like... Yeah, the recording started, yeah, and then yeah. they go, I don't want anything. Yes, yeah, that happens about four or five times a day at the moment. All right. So. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah. May I ask you, why, why did you choose the um, um, Gallifaster? From Pika because Pika <coughs> was uh, very stable. Like because of the UI. The UI. Yeah, we need people to be able to pause and stop the recordings. Okay, so you have you have people that in interacting with the capture. Yeah, the, okay, the, so there's a touch screen, but uh, okay. they just can't start the recording. <coughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What type of capture cards? Are Lots. <laughs> <laughs> now we use a Blackmagic data pack, and we're just moving to Epifan. 4K USB frame crackers, mm -hmm. but we had a custom case built yeah, where we, th we throw all the stuff inside and then it's nice and neat. It looks terrible on the inside though. It's okay. <laughs> 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 metal. Uh, uh, we're using Magwell parts by Cologne. They are amazingly stable mm -hmm. Gallicaster. Uh, we had uh, 10 Gallicaster agents with uh, Black Magic cards. Was, uh, we had 80% uh, failure. Yes, um, yeah. With this uh, segment seg fault uh, problems, yes, and exactly. after Magwell cards, they are using uh, the uh, default Linux, the default Linux uh, driver, and uh, we are also making a backup with Gallicaster because in our studio we are using LiveCut uh, or Mac OS, and uh, sometimes Mac OS or LiveCut failed, and we had the Gallicaster because Gallicaster just refuses to. Die. <laughs> so <laughs> we have no problem at all. And like I was very uh, impressed. Like the last two years, the Gallicaster simply is running. It's not any problem. Do you have internal or external cards? Um, USB or internal. Internal PCI. PCI and uh, what is good with Magwell is that they are also for a small factor. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a smaller computer, mm -hmm. then uh, you can uh, change the. Hold the yeah. Yeah. and you can use the, the smaller, um, smaller, smaller PCI. We've got a lot of data path stuff, um, but this year, due to the complete lack of support from data path, we've moved to major um, cards, and they seem very good. Yeah. They're cheap, cheaper than data path, and um, less buggy. And the nice feature is that even if there is no input, video input, they still have. Um, yeah. yeah, and with the major, you can actually change what that yeah. uh, yeah. image is. Yeah, so you can put your own custom no signal screens and things. We TTHB use mainly X, also we only X, only about uh, close to 50 of them. Some of them are dual stream. And uh, I'm not really happy with Xtron only, and so I'm looking for a second source that is comparable to Xtron. Does anybody here experiences with RF? We have uh, tested the device last year. Um, it looks promising, but as it is now, it's not um, not good for a 24/7 uh, run. Okay. Um, they are working, and uh, we had uh, they are they responded very quick on our um, issues we got, mm -hmm. but there are still some opening issues. So it's not so uh, productive. Replacement for extra devices. As it is right now, no. Okay. So we hope they they uh, do some um, advantage on this in the next months. Okay. Maybe we'll see. So it looks like <coughs> there is two main uh, communities here. One mainly with Gallicast, and the other community mainly with extra. That's right. Got that the right impression about that? Would you call uh, the extra one a community? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, customer. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right yeah. Okay. 
and this software only product you, you showed before. Sure. I, I never heard about Ghetto Studio before. Um, that's a project from um, Cape Town and they showed it last year. Yeah. They uh, used it for phone recording of their lecturers. So they can just record from their desk at their home. Ah, okay. Has anyone just trialed that? So, uh, yeah. Camtasia replacement or... It's, it's in the browser. So you just uh, it's in the browser. In the browser. Yeah. Uh, there's a demo, you can try it out from GitHub directly. Cool, that's really it's, good. It's really, really easy to use and it's working. When I last saw it, Duncan was just showing it and I, I yeah, it wasn't ready for... And with really. a direct connection to OpenCast? No, there isn't right now. You can you can uh, select different sources, um, you have connected to your um, desktop PC mm -hmm. and you can record it and after that you can download this, this is on your own machine. And then you have a file you can do whatever you want. Okay, then upload to OpenCast yeah. as the second step. Sure. Oh. Okay. So uh, and, and I forgot we have a plugin for OBS mm -hmm. uh, since last year. It's working pretty good. Okay. And Serec is in product in production at your site or? Uh, we um, at our university don't use it, but we have partner university universities who. Uh, have a mobile recording box with Windows PC and they are using the rack. This external frame driver? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are using the rack. I'm not using it. I just propose it for our uh, psychological department because they wanted to do some recordings and they didn't want to be uh, publicly available, of course, so they have a very restricted network. and. Um, we started like three years ago. I just suggest them uh, the rack and uh, Black Magic Card because three years or four years ago we used also Black Magic Card, which at the end it was a, a very good decision <laughs> because um, and th we have the same problems like in uh, Linux. And now I'm looking for an, another program to propose. So if someone has experience with another program for Windows, does anyone have? But OBS, yes, right? Maybe OBS is working. Yeah. OBS? Yeah. But don't be confused. We had a talk about OBS, the one button studio. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we yeah. are talking yeah. about the open broadcast studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to clarify. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're open. Sure. I know. You know OBS? Yeah, I have it installed. Yeah. So you stream in your off time? We, we just want to, because they don't have any IT department, they just want to, to open a program. Uh, connect to the cameras, start recording, save it to an NFS, and that's all. But with, oh, with the, um, we, we developed the plugin for OBS that you just configure the OpenCast there and click one button, so you don't have to manually upload anything. Okay. And it just push, and push the final should, recording. Should work with Blackmagic Cards also. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. um, OBS is working with Blackmagic Cards. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's got a lot of support. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Weird things. Good, I know. Your OBS plugin for OpenCast, is that available somewhere? It's on GitHub. Yeah. What credentials does that use? Does it use the personal login for OpenCast or does it use the capture? Agent? I guess Christian knows more about this than I. What, what's the. What accent? credentials does it use? Um, do you have to log in with your personal details or does it log in with the normal capture agent? Well, I think with a normal capture agent because you need the uh, ingest. Yeah. Endpoint. With new OpenCast, you can define your own um, capture agent user credentials. But OBS is more tool. video mixing software, so you have to prepare layouts and everything. It's more complex than. Yeah. Well, I guess you can uh, predefine these and yeah. Uh, yeah. deliver them to. So on the subject of OBS, one of the primary things is live streaming. So, um, yeah. does anyone simultaneously? Uh, live stream while recording on their hardware? Yes, we do some sometimes. So Xtron can do that? Yeah. From okay. Xtron through about browser servers and to YouTube. Yes, yes. that's a that's It's working. Yeah. Yeah, we did stable? Say. Pretty stable, yes. Good. <laughs> no. It's hard to do. Uh, mm. no, it's not that hard. You, you need uh, our Xtron devices are on, the, on internal network, no internet connection at all. 
So we stream to a browser, and the browser streams then to YouTube, and pretty straightforward, no, no problem at all, because all our SM, uh, Exxon devices streams to the central browser server anyway for internal lecture hall to lecture hall uh, transmission. So it's just a little additional configuration in the browser to stream it to YouTube. Uh, does it support um, the Opencast live scheduler? The Exxon? Yes. The live scheduler? Yeah. Um, I don't know. The normal scheduler, it's no, no problem. But the live, new one live? The live? For doing live streaming? Uh -huh. Aha. Uh, the stream from the Exxon SMP to the browser server stays all the time, <coughs> independent oh, wow, okay. of, of a recording scheduling. Yeah. We have to stay, yeah. 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 <coughs> and, uh, that work. We, we stream to the central browser for uh, monitoring purposes mainly. Okay. Uh, and uh, that, so it's always on the stream, and if we configure it to stream to YouTube also, then it's always streaming to there, independent of, of recording. Okay. Is someone, someone using the live scheduling service of Opencast? Only half it, I think, then. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Which version was it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was 6 or plus 6 or 5 plus when you went in. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but I think you need a browser for this. Yeah, okay. There was a version for 5, I think officially it's five. 6. Okay. And you can do it from the admin UI. <coughs> sure, you, just need to, uh, you can just um, enable it. Okay. You need to enable it, it's not by default enabled. When you schedule an event, you get to to say, is it also live? During scheduling, yes. I want to, yeah. We have 1604. Okay. And the Galicasta community I mean, version yeah. cannot do recording no, and live streaming at the same time? <coughs> so I've done some tests. I've got a prototype that does it. Um, but as it turned out not to be a requirement for me, I didn't pursue it. So, But yeah, I mean, so it's definitely possible. Yeah, well, we hacked it to do that. But, uh, but the, the pro version can do it? Yeah, well, apparently. I've never tried it. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> 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 you, you put the pro version. Uh, no. Picture and picture live stream, or do yeah. we have dual stream? No, so, so um, uh, we have compositing, and um, so when the video comes yeah. out, uh, there's the PowerPoint and the um, the present presenter, and we just we just in FFM type, there's a command to say to the layout. But you, you could you could do it different ways, and then we just send that composited very wide video to YouTube, mm -hmm. and YouTube complains saying it's a non-optimal resolution because okay. it's 720 by but I know two and a half text, okay. and, um, <laughs> uh, and that's an non-standard resolution, but it still it still shows it just fine. What about dual streaming? Live streaming dual streaming? See, yeah, YouTube supports that because it supports multiple cameras, and then you can, what it calls cameras, and so you can use the customer suite as well. No, I, I, I think mm -hmm. the idea is that you have some sort of setup in YouTube. I haven't tried this. I, just, I don't think it's available, is it, generally? I think you have to be a big partner or something. Well, I think it's more that you cut between the cameras rather than composite the cameras. Oh. It's YouTube's idea. What about the Twilight? Twilight player? I don't know. No, no, I don't know about my there was a, that. There was a um, demonstration, I think Teltec might have done it, yeah, at some small. conference, yeah, yeah, where conference they were using player and player for two live streams uh, with multi-bit mm -hmm. and everything, and it seemed to work okay. Yeah, the, the simple live streaming we did in uh, Galacaster, which is just calling to FFM, mm -hmm. that worked just fine. And uh, we we let end users do that by pressing buttons, and mm -hmm. they, they seem okay with it, and it works. Um, so they, they don't even tell us anymore when they're doing it. Yeah, my, my version um, hacked it into the GStreamer pipeline, so it was part of the uh, application for calling out to FFM. But I decided to finish it because it became not a priority anymore. So. <coughs> But in general, are you happy with Gallicaster yeah, yeah. development? Well, Andy and I are now community committers for Gallicaster. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You've done some commits, haven't you? Yeah, and we've been working on uh, pull requests yeah. uh, and and bug fixes. I mean, it's I've only had like a month or so with it. I've got a lot more work as well. So, but um, we've been trying to move Gallicaster a bit more. Um, to be more of an open source community and, and try to push it along so when there's bugs, they don't sit uh, in, in Git for, uh, waiting to be done for like 
And you yeah. forgot it. Yeah, they do get forgotten. <laughs> it's really bad, and uh, and it's a it's a, a symptom of Teltec having very very little staff, yeah. um, and they're they're concerned with doing um, bits of work, paid work for people, mm -hmm. and they, they have, only really have one or two developers really. Um, so full time. So did uh, anybody notice the last release of Calicasta? Because I didn't. Yeah. Two point one. Two point one. Point. Yeah. yeah. Point one. Yeah. That, that was a bit <laughs> exactly. of a, a sticking point. I asked them to um, run it by us first. We we should be able to review that pull request, right? They didn't. Uh, I think there's still work to be done, and they are, they are getting better genuinely though. It's yeah. not even actually mentioned as a release on GitHub still, so we should probably do. We could, I guess we could do that. Yeah, we should yeah. really. So to answer your question, are you happy with it? I mean, Galacaster does all the things I need, and that's great, and there's lots of features we've been add, able to add to it really fast. Like we did the YouTube live streaming in, in two weeks. Um, and so I'm very happy about that. I, I'm less happy about the license. Um, uh, the, the, um, the user interface is very tightly wedded to the code, um, that kind of thing. I, I would love to change that stuff. Um, yeah. so the, the user interface is slightly more separate now than it used to be. Uh, so there are, like the recorder is separate to the user interface in, in most ways now. So it is actually possible to, from code, just cut the recorder and uh, not have the UI log to it when it doesn't work. There are, there are some yeah, still are. things where it is tied together, but it's definitely on the right, back and show you on the right path. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's some other things about we should really get Python 3 uh, support. Um, uh, so I think it's quite cool. And there's really some other sort of mm. structural mm. things mm. that we really would like to change. Yeah. It's, it's quite scary That's because it's, it's, it's Galicast is so widely used it's and the community is so for development so bad. So um, not very. I think like, yeah, so you know, if you compare it with the OpenCast community. Sure, yeah. 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 I, I think, think they, so they focus they more on the Pro version. I'm not even sure if they focus on the code version. Really? I'm not sure. I mean, one thing that I'm not clear about as a community committer for the project is if I change something that's going to affect their code product, how is that? Okay. Because in theory, well, what's happened is you know, um, I've written code and Andy's committed it on the, you know, the other way around. So, so we can get code into the into Galicaster without going through Teltech at all. I don't know how that works yet. Uh, sorry. I said a few words about Galicasta and I'm not working for Galicasta. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had some problems. I think Paul um, um, answered also. Uh, we had some problems with the scheduler. Some events didn't start at all. That was a very big problem. But for our situation at the end, it was not a big problem because we still have and we always have 90% um, we, have, we have someone with um, looking at the recording and if the scheduler is not starting then you need to push the start button um, but I think it was fixed uh, like about three four months later because I, I posted to the community and no one replied uh, because no one didn't have the problem maybe maybe I thought that maybe it was my setup problem and then like three or four months later uh, I think uh, root um, replied with the same problem and then there was a fix or something, there was a problem with the scheduler and the... Yeah, yeah I mean I, I actually tried to reproduce your problem, I yeah. couldn't reproduce it so I didn't chime in too much. Maybe it was the opencast version or something, yeah. So there, there are problems also, it's not a perfect world. We, we had an external company come in recently and um, they evaluated every application that we use at the university and they divided them into groups like applications for research applications for teaching and learning and so on and so forth. And so my, all my applications are in the teaching and learning area. They rated all of them in terms of how stable they are and how, how good is their lo longevity and like how long-term do they think they'll be used for and how well are they supported internally. And uh, Opencast came up top and then I think the next one was Galaxy. And then, you know, that, that's higher than they rated flat forward or like, no, there's other systems that you use. And, and they, they didn't need to talk to me, it's completely external evaluation. Uh, so that, I have qualms with it, but independently people seem to think that you know, it's an acceptable piece of software and it will be around for a long time, but it is relatively easy to support. Mm -hmm. I think there has been a lot, of, um, a lot more response recently as well to capturing people either on the list or uh, making issues on uh, GitHub to go faster. I always try and reply to um, issues.
just and by having had committee rights for the last couple of weeks and then you've had it for about four or five weeks or something so I think we will try and okay, so make sure that it's more responsive you know, to make it look like a more active project because at the yeah. moment if you look at the pool requests that sit in there at the moment and you know someone who's been there for a year um, so I think we want to try and so give there's, you, give there's the light at the end of the tunnel so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you, sorry I have a question about monitoring. In large installation, you need some monitoring of your installed mm -hmm. capture plant. And I think there is something for the gully cast, but for a central monitoring of all your gully cast installation and see immediately the state of, of, of the capture plant. <coughs> is somebody using such yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we use. Um, <coughs> system called Peekaboo, um, which has a real-time uh, overview of all your capture agents. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, just the Gally Caster. Um, it's, uh, it's there and it mostly works, but I haven't looked at it for a couple of years, so basically it's... You get visual feedback, you see it, <coughs> audio yeah, is working, see this, recording you see, you see a screenshot of all the machines. So, so yeah. oh, it's like very simple, yeah. it's just like this, so you yeah. have, it's organised into rooms, and, yeah, sorry, yeah, organised yeah. into rooms, this is live, this is actually what's going on in Manchester yeah. right now, yeah. it's not it's very quiet, oh, actually there's uh, something going on there, so... You, you click onto the room, and then you can see a larger image with um, um, le audio levels, yeah. uh, recording statuses, mm -hmm. and what you know, what you want. It's just JavaScript. Because we have uh, 360 old capture systems, uh, those those images aren't live themselves. Yeah. We're pushing updates every few seconds or something. Yeah. But it's easy to go through the list, and you can immediately see when uh, there's a problem, basically. Mm -hmm. <coughs> looking for a project. Yeah. 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 Uh, along with a colleague at um, Sussex when I used to work there. So you can see one's recording right now, you just filter by recording uh -huh. for the day. And then the active ones. I can see the active one. I know the level there, which is like, yeah, that's yeah, working. Yeah. There's obviously audio. Yeah. And no. then I can see there's a major flood. So, yeah. Normally during 10 time, there'd be 100 yeah. ones recording at the same time. Yeah, so I tend to leave it like that on the filter, so it only shows things where something's happening, where it's recording, or where there's a problem, whatever. And so you can see them on the screen. Um, you yeah. pick up things quite easily. Yeah, it's, it's funny on the hour because sometimes the screen's blank and then hundreds of capture systems <laughs> pile in and start recording all at the same time. And it, the, um, the reason for this was um, uh, Paul noticed as we did um, if you if you build a monitoring, monitoring system, uh, make sure it scales because there's, there was three attempts before this yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could send 10 machines to it and you're like, it'd be okay. But you started sending more than 100 and it would fall over. So this, this, this handles uh, 300. 400, fine. Yeah, yeah. The Teltex yeah. built one, and we built one, but I guess they were basically crap. Um, <laughs> 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 the Telecaster does work, don't you? Yeah? The Telecaster does work. Yeah. 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 That's the one that could only handle 10. It does it even still exist? Ah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a standard on application? Yeah. yeah. And this can, can I find it? It's on GitHub, yeah. Okay. So it's um, available? Yeah, it may, it may not build at the moment. <laughs> uh, so yeah, your mileage will vary with it, and so um, it's in two parts. So there's the, the obviously the server side part, but you need a plugin with Galacaster or a plugin with your capture agent. Right. So you either have to write that, just, just Python or something straightforward. Uses WebSocket to uh, is it DDP, DDP yeah, yeah. Um, or you can use one of the examples we put in the GitHub page, but you may need to tweak it for your use how you run things. Do you think I'm looking for something similar for the Xtron devices? Mm -hmm. Xtron devices, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think it, your solution could adapt it to Xtron capture agent? It depends on if they've got any APIs or not, I guess. But, uh, yeah. but I mean, at the moment we're pushing stuff from the capture agent to the central um, thing, so obviously that's not going to happen because you can't run code on the Xtron boxes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was asking I mean, the same you, you, you could do basic stuff for something like Magios that you might be able to ping the XCOM device just to yeah, know that it's. That's what we are doing uh, now. Do, yeah. you, do you have. Um, uh, I don't know if it supports the global. Um, the global view or. The global yeah. view enterprise. So the is. newest film firmware release is the uh, first this basic support for global viewer, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's un unbelievable. Yeah. Just status. That, that, that you get with ping, uh, not, not more.
Um, you may get a temperature, but no recording status, no uh, audio volume, and things like this. It, it, it's quite yeah. important that before, so, yeah. um, before we had monitoring and when Galacast was less stable, in, in the very early days, I think our failure rate was about 4%. And then I think you did some calculations. <laughs> Our most recent failure rate from last semester is um, 0 0.4, 0 0.42? Like yeah. It's about 0 0.4 coming yeah. So it, it, it's very small. Is that technical failure? Or? All kinds of, oh, it's just if the capture agent's right. being off at the wall. It, it's by doing a query to open Does that count things like um, if the schedule wasn't? Right. No, no. So, so we're, we're doing a query against yeah. OpenCast and figuring out what's failed and stuff right. like that. Um, so, so yeah, and it's possible it might be lower because there's a retry strategy, but it's difficult to calculate how successful. Actually, it is it's some of them are because the schedule is wrong. Um, the events came after the fact, uh, so some of them are literally just ne they never existed. So it's hard to say what true failure is. Yeah, into that really deep yeah I was wondering because uh, I have the same problem about deciding what a failure actually is. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. <coughs> um, is it using the, the post picture plugin. Uh, no, we use it. We've got our own uh, plugin. Yeah. It's like a boot plugin. I think. So you are. like to, to monitoring for of extra devices. So that seems that there is nothing here in the moment. Is anybody <coughs> else with extra devices interested in to develop something together with us? Not <laughs> you. <laughs> I need to talk to Extron and get an API here. That'd be my best start. Uh, yeah. You can't develop against nothing. Yeah. Is it, um, I think you are all using monitoring. some checking monitoring systems like Nagios or it's Rhino. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the next step I thought about was uh, checking this device could be <coughs> recording, but it's not. And the next step should be um, how, how is looking the image. Is it okay? Um, yeah. Is there something available like this? So I can't remember the name of the library, but we were talking to the BBC recently, and they were encouraging us. That there's an open source image analysis library that they use, and they used to figure out when uh, when they've got a studio that should be sending a signal, but it's not, or the signal is degraded or bad. They use this library to do some level of automatic analysis, and we, we haven't got as far as even looking at it. But yeah, we would like to do that because. Um, if a signal is very homogeneous um, and a recording is happening, we think that would be a bad sign. You know, if it's pure blue or pure green or pure grey or black, yeah. then, then, then something is wrong. And the same with the cameras. Uh, so we want to look into that. I did that with Python, mm -hmm. um, checking this image if it's black or I blue. Did this, you can get a histogram out, and then yeah. if the histogram is mostly sure. black, then it's probably yeah. black. And, and I thought of comparing two pictures. Take one. This sh this should it be, and then compare and. Um, ours is hard because we have some theatre, sorry, Stuart, that like what is black, yeah. yeah. grey, yeah, it changes okay. over the day because yeah. it, it, it could put it through bad, so it was mm. difficult to do it for real. So, so not for your purpose, but I believe Cape Town have written a plugin, and what it does is, uh, it's to have a, a presenter and then two presentations, and they do a form of analysis, and if the two inputs are. Uh, 95% similar or better, mm -hmm. it, um, it throws one of them away. So that they, uh, the idea is if you've got two projectors showing the same thing, you don't want two videos of that. Mm -hmm. So they do some form of image analysis to figure out whether the projectors are showing the same thing or different things. That's a much better with that on them. That's interesting. Works. I think their plugin is in, is in GitHub as well. Do you reboot capture agents during the night? Or in the morning? Once a month? Once a month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Daily. Daily. <laughs> daily. Every, every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, daily, daily in the morning at uh, uh, seven o'clock. Half past <laughs> six, uh, because we got problems uh, between the capture agent and the lecture hall infrastructure, uh, and uh, so the, the capture agent uh, needs to be restarted after the lecture hall infrastructure is start, started up because the edit information from uh, the HDMI uh, came not yeah. through so some way. I think this problem is solved, but I'm not really sure about it. I thought Xtron so was an AV company. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did do one of the odd thing though, and um, there's some rooms, because we don't, uh, I, mean, I guess this is being recorded, but we don't get on fantastically well with our, our, our AV department. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have access to some of the lecture theatres, and uh, for the ones where we don't have access, 
We have a, a, a GSM uh, power plug, so a, a mm -hmm. socket with a mobile phone and SIM card in, and we can text them and it turns the power off, and then we can text them and it turns the power on. Just in case. Yeah, and it, it has a little battery inside, so if someone unplugs it, it sends us a text message. Yeah. We don't, it's rare we have to use them, but they tend to be in the biggest theatres, so any amount of downtime is bad. So we probably only use it like less than once a month. Uh, yeah, in fact, we had a, a problem where a captation went, went wonky, went wrong. Um, it was in one of the, the big high use theatres, and it was for a whole day basically, and it was so damaging. Uh, all the recordings were lost, and the amount of support tickets was huge. So I advise, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look after your capture agents. <laughs> Something else we do is uh, go plug in to um, check for USB devices that yeah. you need. So um, it will check to make sure if you're using a USB microphone, that, that microphone is plugged in um, using the I USB IDs. Um, and also we have a flashing light thingy to say that it's recording, so it checks to make that's a USB device as well. Uh, and as soon as anything gets unplugged, um, it'll send us an email to say that room's been unplugged and it'll keep bugging us every hour if we don't uh, fix it. Um, and it does some stuff like if you're, if, if it's a microphone, um, you can tell it to switch to another um, uh, pulse audio input. And so it can con continue recording and doesn't break. The scanning cast tends to break if you rip the uh, microphone out normally. Um, so that's yeah. another thing we do for the stream. I know uh, Marcus from University of London, who can't be here, they have network enabled power strips mm -hmm. and then uh, they can turn the individual sockets off mm -hmm. so they can remotely power cycle just the capture agent mm -hmm. or even the whole AV system and the projector as well. And yeah, they do that over Ethernet. Mm -hmm. We also have a, a fully independent backup recording system. So we have in every lecture hall we have a, a, a webcam, a Axis webcam that is uh, installed so we can zoom in to capture to capture the, the projection and the audio from uh, from the audio system. And all these streams are uh, uh, captured from a fully independent server system, it gets the stream and, and makes a file and it fully independent scheduled. So it's a, a person scheduling this lecture for the whole semester at the same time. And uh, this, this works very well and, and we are really, really happy about it. So last semester, no, we had about close to 4% loss of the production recording. And with this backup system, uh, if something is broken in the production system, so we get the file, uh, fix it, and, and, and imported it. So with this backup system, we had last semester really 0% loss. Uh, so it's no total loss. 4% were about a little bit low, lower quality because of the backup system. But we are really happy about it, but it's a lot of investment in money and in, in personal costs. So we are not sure about uh, going further with um, this backup system, but at the moment we are really, really happy about it. Fully independent, so even if there is some wrong in the production scheduling, the second backup scheduling works. So, <coughs> is everybody else doing s such an effort for? We do. You do? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. We we are using uh, the PyCA as a backup capture agent, mm -hmm. and we have. Um, a room microphone in it, the Samsung UB1, and um, we capture the screen from the camera camera screen, yeah. which is uh, separately recorded at HDMI for the general recording, and it's working quite good so far. Yeah. What types of microphones do you in general use? <laughs> and yeah. in all the rooms that are about this size, we use a, a small yeah, boundary microphone on the desk. But recently, USB. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's a Samsung UB one, and then we started using a different brand. But recently, we found that um, there's going to be a talk later about Google Speech to Text, and that works great in a room like this that's well acoustically designed. But um, in a bad room, and we have a lot of bad rooms, mm. it almost sounds like garbage. So we're going to put a Renovo Labs yeah. um, 1.9 gigahertz microphone in. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to try it in a few rooms, but then we might have to do it in the hundred rooms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We 
use the Samsung keeping one as well. And, um, apart from a couple of theatres in the medical school, we use um, clip-on lapel mics. With clip-on, do you have any backup, like in yeah. your own microphone? No, and we get quite a lot of failures that way. Yeah. Because if they forget to turn it on. Yeah. yeah, the problem with them is that they're in very big rooms, so yeah. we might start putting in backup um, USB mics as well, but we probably didn't get much out of it. In you have a plug-in for that, don't you? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So there's a plug has to plug in, and uh, it's been that for ages now, but uh, <coughs> if you get it enabled, it'll record a backup uh, audio from uh, a USB microphone, and if it does do a really crap check, <laughs> and if the, the threshold is met that the audio is poor, mm -hmm. um, it'll switch to the backup audio. Oh, okay. um, we, had, we had instances in a room this size um, where there was a microphone like this, and immediately the lecturer would come in and turn it off because they didn't like the microphone, but they wanted the recording, but they don't know how to use AV and AV stupid. So that stuff like that, that that's why. It's called failover audio plugin. Yeah, failover yeah. audio. That means you have capture agent in rooms that have no PA. Yes, yeah, yeah. the majority don't have a PA. Or oh, they um, have speakers, but only for the sound from the laptop. Oh. They have no. They would never have a microphone in a room this small. Oh, okay. And we probably have two hundred rooms like that. Yeah, it's interesting. What about the background noise with these microphones? We so yeah, 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 we, we do them. Yeah, we've had complaints like say because the in-room experience is going to be quite similar to the microphone experience. So we we had someone complaining to us saying that they could hear building noise outside. It's like, well, you can when you're in the classroom, you can't get rid of that. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so people's expectations can be a bit strange. <laughs> it worked well enough. I mean, it's not going to be like pro broadcast quality. Mm -hmm. And in the big theatres, we have wireless microphones, digital systems, everything. Mm -hmm. But in the smaller ones, they're, they're the more challenging. We have one building where all the walls are concrete and the ceiling's concrete, and it's a hollow floor. So um, you just hear banging and echoes all the time. It's really bad. Bad. But but it sounds yeah, yeah. It, it sounds awful in the classroom as well. I had to do a lecture in there and yeah, I, I could hear my own voice re reverberating off the walls. And, you know, it almost makes it sound like your speech is garbled. Yeah. Okay. Do you equip only rooms with PA with uh, capture clients mm -hmm. because uh, if the teacher has to use uh, the microphone because of the large yeah. room anyway, so we have really no loss of audio uh, last semester. Uh, smaller rooms like this without any PA, we do not equip this capture agent yet, at least. Mm -hmm. It may change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do the same. Yeah, we do the same. Yeah, we yeah. Okay. Okay. use shower and center. Time's up. We should go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to get some pictures of yellow. <laughs>